be looking at the gym called Devise. This gym is a great and flexible authentication solution for your Rails application. I really like Devise because it is highly configurable. It's also widely used, constantly updated, and it has many built-in options. The first of the built-in options is Database Authenticatable, which it hashes and stores the password in the database to validate the authenticity of the user signing in. The authentication can be done either through a POST request or a HTTP basic authentication. The second feature is OmniAuthable, which adds OmniAuth support, which is a library that standardizes multi-provider authentication for web applications. For example, authenticating to your application via Twitter or Google. The third feature is Confirmable, which sends emails with confirmation instructions and verifies whether an account has already been confirmed during sign-in. This is a pretty important feature because it can confirm that the email address is valid and that a user or human has actually confirmed the email verifying the account instead of a robot which could then flood your site with spam. And the fourth feature is Recoverable, which resets a user password and sends reset instructions. So if the user forgets their password or if they did not receive their instructions, they have the option to have that emailed to them so they can then recover their account and log in. The fifth feature, Registerable, is one of the basic features of the software where it handles the signing up of users through a registration process, also allowing them to edit and destroy their account. The sixth feature, Rememberable, manages generating and clearing a token for remembering the user from a saved cookie. So if you log into your account, you can check the Remember Me option, and then the next time you visit the site after you close your browser, you will still be logged in. The seventh feature is Trackable, which tracks the sign-in count, timestamps, and IP address of the user. The eighth feature is Timeoutable, which expires sessions that have not been active in a specified period of time. The ninth feature is Validatable, which provides validations of email and password. It is optional and can be customized, so you're able to define your own validations. And the tenth feature is Lockable, which locks your account after a specified number of failed sign-in attempts. The user can unlock their account via email or after a specified period of time. So to get started, we'll add the device gem to our gem file. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. And then from the root of your application, you call Rails Generate Device Install, and this will generate the initializer config file as well as the English locale. There's going to be some additional setup if you haven't already done it, and one of them that's going to be important is to set within your development environment configuration file is the default URL options. And you'll also want to make sure that you have a root page as well as your alert set up. You can also run an additional generator, Device Views, that will create all the view templates that you can then customize to fit the look and feel of your application. So under my config environments development.rb, I'll add in the default URLs line. And since I am using Bootstrap in my example application, the device views really don't look that good. So I came across this gem by Andrew Formero, which is called Device Bootstrap, and it does a pretty nice job of creating the initial views that I need. So I'll add this gem to my gem file, I'll run the generator that's provided, and then I'll remove it from my gem file, since the generated files is what we really need. So we can then run bundle to install the device bootstrap gem, and then we can generate our views with the device views bootstrap generator. Once that has completed, we'll remove device bootstrap from our gen file and run bundle again. We can then run another device generator on our model that we want to use for authentication. In our case, we'll use the user model. And this generator will do a few things. If you already have a user model, then it'll add the necessary migrations. Otherwise, it'll create the table users. It'll also create our user model with some default options. And it'll also add device for users to our routes file. You'll then need to run RakeDB Migrate to create the user table or add the attributes to the user model. So within my application layout file, I'm rendering a partial called Navigation. The Navigation is your standard bootstrap header, and then you'll see that we are rendering the Navigation links. I'll add in some links for device so then we can log in or sign up. So the first line here, if user signed in, this is a device helper to see if we have a current user. And if the user is signed in, then we'll create a link to the edit account, which points to the device registration edit action. And then we'll also provide them a logout link. And if they are not currently logged in, then we'll give them a link to log in, which points to the device session controller on the new action. So looking at our application, we now have a login button because I'm not currently signed in. And then we can enter our email address and our password. And we also have the remember me option. 
Since we don't have an account, we can go ahead and sign up for one. And once we sign up for our account, it automatically logs us in. And now we have the option to edit the account or we can also log out. So now I want to protect our application for certain actions. So we'll create a protected method and then we'll want to make sure that any user can access the index action of our visitors controller. However, the protected action we want to limit to those who are currently logged in. And within any controller, you can create a before action and then authenticate user. However, in our case, we only want to do this on the protected action. So within our visitors view, I'll create a new document called protected html.erb and I'll just paste in some text. And then in our routes, let's add in a route to the protected action. And then for demonstration purposes in our navigation links, I'll add in a link to the protected path. So looking at our application now, we have our protected path and we can toggle between the two pages, our index and our protected. If we were to log out, and then try to visit the protected path, you'll see that it does not take us to that view, but rather it redirects us to then first log in. So if we look at our user model, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of default options that device configured. We have our database authenticatable, registerable, recoverable, rememberable, trackable, and validatable. You can also add in the other options, lockable, confirmable, timeoutable, and omniauthable. However, if you do not need all these options, for example, if you do not want the rememberable option and trackable, then you can remove these. And then you can come into your migration and then comment out the fields that you're no longer going to use. However, keep in mind that you wouldn't want to do this on a production application because you would also then need to roll back your database and then re-migrate from this point forward, and that could really cause some issues. However, feel free to do this if you're within the development stages of this feature. So within device, we do have access to a helper called current user if the user is signed in, and then we can pass in something like email so we can see the user's email. So under our config initializers, device created a file called device.rb and you'll definitely want to come in here and check this out and make sure that you tailor it to your application's needs. It does have a lot of options that you may need to change right off the bat. However, it is very well documented for each one of the options and there shouldn't be too much confusion on what option does what. So you'll definitely want to check out the device wiki on GitHub because it has a lot of information that we've not covered. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.